Um, so hashtag Webinar Wednesday is kicking off with a bang today. And basically the reasons that we have, have started this is just to try and make sure that all of our clients are making use of the system as, as much as possible um, and, and are 100% confident in our system. Um, we decided, we realized that um, a lot of people come and go and maybe forget the basics. So that's why we're starting off today at the basics um, of how to build a basic itinerary. Okay, my name is Kate. Um, some of you know, some of I don't. Um, some of you don't know me, um, but I am in the onboarding team, and it is my role to onboard people and train um, our our current and existing clients. So it's a new initiative that our team has started to kickstart with all of these boot camps. Okay, just something to note is that depending on the package that you have, some elements of the functionality covered may apply to you while some may not. So for the basics of building an itinerary, itinerary it is generally um, applicable to all, um, but then depending on the further future boot camps, um, most, some of the, the functionalities may change depending on your package. If you're unsure about what package you're on, it should be on your invoice. You um, will be specified on the invoice of your company. Um, and then otherwise you can always ask someone in support and they'll be able to assist with that. Okay, there's just some contact details if you want to scratch them down. Um, for that, but I will be sending a follow-up email with contact details for everyone as well. Okay, so then just some things. Um, the first thing I just want to say to everyone is that you are muted for um, the sake of keeping this um, as as easy as possible for us on our side. Um, as we go through all of the features and the building of the itinerary, please, there's a chat box, send me questions as we're going so that you don't forget the questions by the end of the session. Um, and then at the end of the session, once I've built the itinerary, I'll go through all of the questions and answer all of those um, relevant to the, the topic. If there are any technical questions, um, I may not reply to it in the, this session if it's going to take too long or if it's specific to your um, your company. Um, if that is the case, I will email you afterwards as I do have your email addresses and I'll be able to respond to you personally after um, the session. Then there will be a recording of the session um, and it will be made available to our um, clients and it will be added into our database of um, webinars that you guys can make use of in the future. Okay, so if you do have to run out or there's an emergency or something like that, it will be available for you at a, a later stage. Okay. So welcome to everyone. Um, we're going to kick off with the itinerary builder basics. Um, and of course, the first thing that we're going to do is enter our itinerary builder. So just a note for everyone, um, we are using the new itinerary builder. Um, if you do by any chance still have access and are using the old itinerary builder, that is going to be switched off at some stage and I would recommend that you contact myself um, with regards to that as we are going to be moving forward with the new itinerary builder um, without, throughout the company. Okay, so our itinerary builder would be our blue button depending on your functionalities and um, your permissions. You might have different buttons listed over here, but the itinerary builder everyone should have unless you are a product. Okay, when we enter our itinerary builder, we've got a couple of different options. Um, 
not everyone will have the data functionality, but everyone should have the components and the new itineraries. So the main, main one we're going to be focusing on today is our personal itineraries, and that is where you can create an itinerary for a specific client. The sample itineraries it would be um, for if there was no specific client um, and you wanted to use it for multiple people or else something like put it on your website or something something like that. So when we create a personal itinerary, we always use the left hand button. The right hand option is where you're going to see all of your existing itineraries. So we will just tick over there and have our options. Okay, some of these features over here will change depending on your package, but this packet, this um, example I'm using is the full digital enterprise package. So it has themes and branding. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is name our itinerary. So um, the one and only thing on this page that is 100% compulsory for you to fill in is the name of the itinerary because our system needs to save it as something and without a name, it cannot go further. So I'm going to call it where to 101 example. Okay, so you can name them however you want, depending on how your company makes um, the choices and, and how you present to your clients, that would be according to you. We can put in some basic details, your client name, your, con your reference number, your internal reference number, your client email address, and your telephone number as well with regards to the itinerary. Okay. Our next block that we have is our pricing field, and in the pricing field is where you can fill in your pricing. Um, it is a free text field. Okay, being a free text field, you can write in, you can enter, you can put in different lines, and we have added the functionality to bold, italic, and underline the information that is added within this field. Um, as you'll see, as I'm writing, these little red indicator buttons that are appearing on the tabs, and this is just an, a tool for you to be able to see where the um, information is loaded, and if you have um, loaded information, so that when you go back and check old itineraries or copy itineraries, you would be able to see easily behind the tabs. Our price includes, we would do our overall includes of the pass package, so um, as whatever is included in the package for the clients, you can specify their overall, um, and then whatever is not included that you wanted to specify, you could write in here. Okay, we have recently added a new feature, Terms and Conditions. Um, this Terms and Conditions is separate to the company Terms and Conditions. So in the Admin tab, you're able to add in Terms and Conditions that are relevant to every single itinerary, and these Terms and Conditions would only be relevant to this itinerary for this specific client. What I can use it for, maybe book by Friday, or we can say flight prices are valid for three days. Um, or something along those lines. So whatever you would like to specify to your client, you can put it in there. Okay, further down we have our number of travelers. It's a simple plus or minus. You can put in the number of travelers over there. And then our room configuration, we have single, double, um, twin, and triple, and this is our overall configuration for the um, itinerary. It can also be changed per accommodation as we go along. Okay. So once we've done that, the basics are filled in, and we can go on to step two, our accommodation, by either clicking on two or clicking on the next step at the bottom right-hand side. Okay. On our accommodation tab, we can open up and we're just wanting to load accommodations today. So my first one that I'll pop in, 
my favorite combination. <laughs> um, pop in um, Cape Town, Hermanus, and Kruger National Park, so that it gives us an overall view of the different transfers and, and how we can go about that. So once we've loaded in our accommodation, we can choose our basis depending on what is included in the rate sheet, um, as well as our drinks, and then we can change our number of nights. Further below, we can edit our destination, so I can choose if I would like to show destination information for Cape Town, Western Cape, or South Africa. The day grouping, what I'll do is I'm going to leave this one as day by day, and when I create Hermanus, let's pop in the marine. Um, I'm going to change that one to by destination, and I will show you further on if it is how it is different. Okay, if I add in um, another one, we can go Ivory Lodge. Okay, um, there is a question coming through with regards to extra room types um, and if we are offering um, for upgrades or anything like that. So we are only able to put in one room type. Um, that would be put in by clicking on the orange button. If there are any upgrades or um, anything else that you would need to offer, you would need to offer that on um, in written text for the client. Um, when they are looking at the itinerary, they will be able to see the different room descriptions. They're not only going to see their um, when, when they look at the property, they won't only see the one room description. Um, so for now that we are only able to put in the one over there. Okay. Make that one fully inclusive and I'm going to make that by destination as well. So just to point out, we've got day by day, we've got by destination and by destination. Um, and if I jump over to the planner, you'll see what happens. So when we are on day by day, I can add in an activity for each day in the itinerary, whereas if I'm by destination, I only have the option to load activities once. So I would use that in situations where um, maybe they are doing the same thing every day or you have, your clients are at leisure and you only want to recommend activities. You wouldn't necessarily want um, to specify times and everything for that. Okay, I'm going to jump over and put in a start date and it adds one night over here. So I just have to make sure that this matches the number of nights I have in my accommodation. If this is not green and the number of accommodation nights booked versus the date nights does not match, it will not show. Okay. So on to our next step is where we're really going to get started on building our route. So the route builder um, is quite intricate, um, um, but it is also dependent on you on how much and how little information you would like to feed through to your clients. So the thing with our route builder is it will always have in um, the accommodation, the sorry, my apologies, the transfers between accommodations loaded, but the start and the end dates would be empty. What we have to do is start filling all of that information in. So maybe our clients are landing at uh, Tambo Airport, um, but then it's saying that it's going to fly to Cape Grace, which is incorrect because, um, yeah. So we can add that in. So what we will do is we will add another leg and we will put Cape Town Airport in there. So we've got our scheduled flight from ORT to Cape Town Airport, and then we will have this as a self-drive to Cape Grace if they were picking up a vehicle. From Cape Grace, we have a self-drive to the Marine, um, and then from the Kruger National Park, uh, well, to get to the Kruger National Park, park you can't really self-drive, um, so we need to add in some more legs. 
So the first one that we are going to do is we're going to say self-drive from the Marine to Cape Town Airport. Add another leg, fly to Nelspreit, and then we will transfer our clients. So that's just by dropping down, we can choose our different options. We will transfer to the lodge, where they will transfer back to the airport. Oopsie. Transfer back to the airport and you could add more legs all the way home if you wanted. Okay, so once I put this all in, what I can do is I can click on my airplane over here and I can load contact information. So this contact information that is already pre-populated over here has been built within the admin tab um, and you are able to add it into your itinerary. Otherwise, what you can also do is free text um, the, the details in there for your clients. You can put in information um, with regards to your flights and save the details. Same with our self-drives. With the self-drives, you are also able to choose the vehicle. So if they are driving a safari vehicle or um, a bicycle, you can choose all of that over there. With our transfers, we again are able to choose our different icons that will display on the map. We can load in our contacts. We can also choose what type of transfer it is. So is it a private or a guided or a private guided um, or scheduled transfer and what the client can expect. That's all the accommodation types I have. It's somewhere where there's a very long self-drive. So let's just change that one to a flight and that's better. Okay, then we have the option to pull some directions and we also have the option to add in car hire depending on what you are using for your clients. So the directions option will not be available if you are doing transfers. That would only be available for our self-drives. Okay, so once we've filled all of that in, we can click on our planner and now we will be able to add in different accommodations. So as you go along, um, you will, when you go from one step to another, it does save. As it is a website and a web-based product, particularly in the planner, I always recommend pressing quick save. We have had an instance where someone was working for a very long time and when their browser refreshed, they lost all of the work because they had not pressed quick save. So when you're going through steps quickly, um, you are you can take it that going on to the next step normally saves all of your work. Whereas if you're going to sit on the planner and work on it for an hour or two straight, you can quick save as you go so that you, there is no likelihood of the website refreshing and um, you losing your work. Okay, so automatically all of the information is loaded in here, the schedule, the, the flights, the transfers, check-ins and check-outs. What we can do is we can populate this section with activities now. So firstly on our check-in, I can add in my times, and I've got number lock on, so it's not working. There we go. And then I can also add in different services, so like a meet and greet service. A meet and greet service, you can again pre-populate from your admin tab. Otherwise, you can fill in your own meet and greet information each time for your clients. Contacts, again, can be loaded from your admin tab or typed in. Okay, so then if I want to move my meet and greet service to the correct place, I can say it is over there and my meet and greet person will maybe take them to Avis or something. Okay, 
On day two, what I'm going to do is just add some activities. So there's two ways to add activities. You can either click the orange button or you can just go ahead and straight away click over there. Um, it depends on you. And what we can do is start writing in some activities. So we can put in, let's see. Robin Island. So whatever activities you would like to say, suggest for your clients, you can put them in over here for them. Then you can also put in morning, afternoon, maybe they're going to have dinner at Kirstenbosch, um, and then you can say if it is a planned, a planned activity, a recommended activity, an optional or information. Okay, so that just allows the client to see what is included and what is not. Then if I go on to day three, we have a day tour functionality. So there are certain providers that publish day tours within our system. So I'm just going to see over here, there's a private well, um, Winelands tour. So double click there and pop that into my itinerary. Sorry, one thing I did forget to go through is our notes fields at the bottom. So we have our specific notes fields for every day or destination if you have grouped them together. So what I can do is just type in any information for the clients. So welcome, Cape Town. Um, Maybe they're arriving in the middle of summer, even though I made it for June. Okay, um, so then our included, what we have here, this is our daily include. So you can specify on a daily basis what is included or excluded for your clients. When I go over to day four to six, while well, they are in Amanus, what we have um, is the option to add in some product activities. So certain of our products have got um, activities loaded for you to make use of and when they have got um, activities loaded the product activities will appear here and you can drop down and you can choose the activities that you would like loaded so we can put them in and then what we can do is change this all to recommended maybe if you're not planning things for your clients while they're there if we go over to Sabi Sands, we have again a couple of options depending on what is loaded. So we can put in our um, cultural village tour and then we can also free text activities. So this is an option throughout the system as well. So if there is something, for example, the game drives for this property that are not loaded, what we can do is we can say, morning and evening game drives and once it is done searching it's going to give me an option to load free text uh, Sorry, sometimes while I'm on a webinar, it does go a bit slower. So we can save it there as free text. So what this allows me to do is save any type of activity um, and any wording I would like to put in here for my clients without having it to be preloaded in the system. The only, inf um, the only shortfall of this is that there is no information associated to this activity but for that solution what we have is an add place and what I can do is I can click over here and I can choose Sabi Sands private game reserve at the bottom and save it. So what will happen is when my clients click on the morning and evening game drives, they will get information about the Sabi Sam's game reserve. Okay. And then I can go to my last day and we can say that they are leaving at 10 o'clock 
and put that in. So that's the basics of um, the of the planner. This will also be covered. It has its own uh, um, webinar as well. So I'll leave that there for now. If we go on to our next step, we have our review step, and the review is just going over any of the all of the information we've loaded. So we have it under our uh, the overview, we have flight details and the daily information where you can just have a look through what you have put in the system. If we go on to the additional details, we have an introductory section. So we say, um, Okay, so that's because um, I don't have much inspiration um, for that right now. So then there is the introduction. So that is our itinerary complete. When we preview our itinerary, click there and view our itinerary. And now I'm viewing it as a digital enterprise package. So this is the the how it would look if you have a digital version. So we can enter. And we have all of our information over here. So I have my introduction, my list of hotels, my key information about the trips, and then all of the pictures. If I go on to my destinations, there's my destination information, my accommodation information. So what I was saying earlier about the rooms is if you click on the rooms, the clients are still able to see different rooms if the product has those rooms loaded. On our daily information, we have there's my day notes and my, in, my expert tips, and all of my activities are here that can be clicked through um, to, for more information. If I click over there, you'll see this one is the day tour, and it has a lot more information than just the normal activity. So this day tour has been loaded by the provider, but you'll see that unless they have added their actual information into the descriptions, it will not be visible, so your clients will not go directly to them. Then over here is where I made it by destination, and you can see it's just one grouping over there, as well as the Sabi Sands. On the map, here is my map with all of my different icons, my list of transfers that I put in, so the flights and then the transfers, our country information and our About Us information. So that was the digital view. If you have a virtual package, your package will look like this. Let's change this over. So if you have the virtual package, this is what your itinerary will look like. It is the map-based itinerary. So it will have all of the transfer um, icons and routes. It has your introduction, your pricing, your facts, and then as we go down, it has all of your services that you can get the information for. Okay, great. So that is the basics of building an itinerary. We've built a virtual and we've built, um, I've shown you the virtual and the, the digital outcome. And then what I'm going to do is just take two minutes. I know I am running a bit over time, but I would rather answer all of the questions that we can. Um, so I'm going to just take five minutes, put myself on mute, have a little look through the questions and get some answers coming in, in a shortly. Okay, so if you have any questions, please put them through on the chat function now. Okay, great. So lots of questions. It's great to see that everyone is taking the time to learn. Um, the first thing I want to answer is, uh, sorry, how can I keep some itineraries as a base so I wouldn't have to type in um, whether it be the day itineraries and notes every time. So we have a functionality um, with our components. 
uh, it, when I open the itinerary builder, there are the components and those are a great tool for you to be able to avoid having to retype as well as the sample itineraries would also be. So if I look at the boot camp that we have uh, over here, that would be the story of components and day tours and that I would highly recommend you attend that to get further information on that. I will also send, it, there is also in our knowledge base, documents on how to create components. Okay. Does everyone have the product activities or is it only with certain packages? So every operator will have the option to add in product activities, providing that the product has loaded product activities. So this is dependent on whether the hotel has loaded them or not. Um, it would only be for iBrochure hotels that would be able to load in their product activities. So if they haven't put them in, you can go into admin and build activities on products. Uh, and if you have access to the admin tab, Under your suppliers, you can customize your description. And if you look over here, there is the rooms and you can add custom rooms and add custom activities. So whatever you load in there would then display on your itinerary. Okay. How do we add hotels that are not in where to? If you have any hotels that are not in where to that you need loaded, please can you contact our support team and they will be happy to, to load them in there for you. If you have a huge uh, list of hotels, it may take a while, but if it's just one hotel or something like that, then it will be a shorter time. Please just bear in mind that we are only adding in our supported countries, uh, so I can also send a list on what are our supported countries and what are not, but your support team will be able to guide you further with that. Okay, does the digi digital itinerary builder also give an option for a printable itinerary or is that only um, in the virtual plan? So the digital itinerary builder, my apologies, I should have shown everyone that. Um, at the bottom, we have got various outputs. So this is the link that we would send off to our client. And then we have the functionality to draw a printable itinerary. There are some options. Um, we are, have the functionality to pull vouchers um, if there are dates in the system, the print summary, print directions, and then an Excel sheet with all of our services on. The mobile code would all only be for any enterprise clients, so if you're a light client, you will not have the mobile code, and that would just be available for those with a correct package. Is it possible to have a direct button to the printable itinerary on the digital itinerary without having to download it and add it to the documents? So unfortunately, that is not an option. Um, if you have got a, a digital package, you can upload a cover image and that will create a print button on your itinerary, but you would still have to download the printable over here and upload it over here. The reason being is that we don't want any mishaps to go through. We would prefer that everyone downloads the printable and make sure that they are happy with everything that, uh, as to how it has displayed before attaching it. Um, can you show us how to do vouchers that we can email to clients? Okay, so our vouchers is just the button. We click it. What it brings up is a whole lot of our activities. Um, so all of the activities that we have within the system will be listed over here. And uh, depending on if these are included or not in your in your itinerary and whether or not you would want vouchers for them, you can tick and untick all of them. The system automatically generates for any transfer activities, uh, transfers and accommodations. So if we print our vouchers, it's very simple. It downloads as a Word document. You can save it. And when you open it up, you will have your 
whoopsie, sorry, it's on my other screen. You'll have your vouchers. So I unfortunately don't have um, Word, so it doesn't display 100% correctly, but there would be a neat block around the notes fields and your logo would be on the top right hand side. Um, okay, where could I change the layout of the digital view to look similar to your example? The itineraries I have built have side view panels. Okay, so that, um, depending on your view, is going to be the, in your themes, we did a boot camp on this a while ago, so there is your themes in, within your admin tab. Uh, if you itinerary doesn't look like this, it would mean that someone within your company has changed the theme on purpose. So just make sure that um, you do have the ability um, to choose how you would want it to look, but it, it, the themes can be changed in your admin tab. And then within the itinerary builder, you would just attach it and change it over here. Okay. Um, okay, so someone is asking um, what if we have apartment and villa house accommodation. I'm not quite sure what you are referring to, so I would I will come back to you with an email after the session so that we can just chat um, about what you are looking for with that. And then someone says pressing itinerary builder. Um, someone is asking about the create publishable tour. Um, I'm also not 100% where you are referring to, so I will contact you after the session and go over that. <laughs> Uh, the, an undo button would be fantastic. Um, I'm not sure of the functionalities or the capabilities within our system with regards to that. We don't have it as an option at the moment. Um, and I will can always check with my development team if it is a feature that we may implement in, in, in some stage. Um, I see it's in case of deleting a large section of writing by mistake. Yeah, it is um, an unfortunate thing. What I do recommend, though, is if you are planning on making any major changes or anything, just um, copy your itineraries and make the major changes to the copy so that you have a record of what is going on. Okay. Okay, so someone has asked about own arrangements. The own arrangements um, is simple. You can add in your own arrangements. You can put in a hotel or an area in there and fill in the number of nights and all of that information. It then specifies on the output that it is um, an own arrangement that they have sorted it out. There is also, if we look over here, that will be covered in number webinar number four, uh, but there will also be a document on the knowledge base that I will send you after the session. Okay, um, the options for a day trip when there is no accommodation involved at all, on our itinerary builder that is not an option. Um, I will pop you an email after the session and just check on why what you would you would need that for and and see what package you're on and if we can assist you with that okay that seems to be a quite a popular one um, everyone wants to know how to build something without an accommodation um, so I just have to come back to each of you on an individual basis as I am not able to answer that in a general basis. I need to actually look at um, everyone's specific packages and, and presentations. So I will come back on all of that. Okay. Uh, 
Um, okay, so uh, the itinerary builder is not a secure website at the moment. Um, the reason being is that we allow the export of um, certain content um, through our our, our um, widgets. So because um, you are able to make use of um, all of our content for our hotels and embed that onto your system, um, then the website won't be seen as a secure website. It's not because we are sending out any other information. It's purely because of our widgets sending out information to your websites. Um, and to make a, a client link with a password, we don't have that functionality. The client link, if you look at your browser over here, the only option um, we have would be to um, disable or enable an itinerary. So that would um, just make sure that the, if it's disabled that they are no longer able to open it. Okay, great. So that is all for now. Um, there was no more questions. I'm going to come back to everyone that I haven't dealt with uh, on uh, individual basis for this and then I will send out an email and your the recording will be made available soon with regards to this okay so thank you very much for all of your time and for working and and asking questions it was very exciting for us to see that there was so much interest um, and we look forward to our webinar Wednesday next month Next month we will be covering, let's just make 100% sure, um, the planner. So anything that happens within the day planner next month on the 20th of June at 10 a.m. Central African time, we will be covering all of that information. Okay, so I'm going to end it off now. And if you have any further questions, please contact either myself or our support team and we will be happy to assist you. Thank you. Bye.